And I, I titled it right what I said. She, uh, she did what she could. Come on, turn to somebody and say, just do what you can. I mean, you know, that, that's the way life is. You got to do what you can. Uh, you know, I, you know, my wife, thank God, she don't ever say to me, I got to do what I can't. She says, just do what you can. Because if she said, do what I can't, I'd be in trouble. How I many you know there's a lot of can't, I got a lot of I can't do things. But when she tells me, just do what I can, then I give it all I got because I've got hope in what I can. Are you listening to me today? But it's when I get put under the pressure of do what I can't, then I'm always struggling because I know that I need supply and what I can't do probably won't have supply because I can't do it. And God don't work that way. Now, have you ever asked yourself a question like this? A hundred years from now, will even matter that I was born? A hundred years from now, will it even matter that you were born, that you were here on the earth? I mean, to some of us that are up the hill a ways, a hundred years from now, somebody will say, well, do you remember Bishop Pierce? And somebody will say, no, what was that? Who was he? Oh, never mind. And it'll just be one of those thoughts. But how many of you know that when you think like that, you, you, you look and say, well, well man, what is my purpose? I gotta have a purpose. I gotta fulfill it. I gotta find it. Come on. I, I read this statement several months ago and I even used it as a, as a little message I preached. It's a quote. Are the things I'm living for worth Christ dying for? Are the things I'm living for worth Christ dying for? Now, that's really a heavy thought. And we need to examine that for a minute. And uh, we just came through one of the best holidays, I think, that we ever get to celebrate in this country uh, called Thanksgiving. I said that earlier. Uh, why? Well, family and food <laughs> uh, and being thankful. We had a great service last Sunday and we had people to stand up and testify how thankful they were. And it was very in inspiring and very uh, challenging. And, uh, but how many you know Thanksgiving is just a good time where you're going to find good food can you imagine this now mark 14 and let's look at it together verse 8 and 9 i read it to you earlier but she has done jesus said she has done this is the same woman the, the woman that brought the alabaster box and busted it open she has done what she could she has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial assuredly i say to you Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Now, how many of you'd rather have that story about your life than the fact that you ate an airplane or something else bizarre or less important? Can you hear that? This story about this woman is worth us looking at. How in the world, how will you and I be remembered? What kind of legacy will we leave for our family? That's a good question, isn't it? How many of you want the legacy that you have to be that which could be remembered or be spoken about what you did while you were here to the glory of God? How many of you hear that? How many of you know if they can't say anything, would that be great if they could at least say that woman, that man really served the Lord in their generation? Can you hear that today? Now, I'm gonna take it a little further. I want you to come with me now. And notice this woman's life uh, uh, be, became, how it became, this woman's life, how it became memorialized, not for the things she couldn't do, but for the fact she did what she could, Mark 14, 8. And Jesus said to her, she has done what she could. Now, I'm repeating this because sometimes it's important. But notice this, this is where I'm gonna shift here. Notice that this woman was being criticized by the Pharisees and others that were there. She did what she could in the midst of huge criticism. Let I me mean, see that. Luke 7, 39, Simon, Jesus host, a Pharisee said, this man, if he were a prophet, would know in what manner of woman this who is touching him uh, uh, is, for she's a sinner, if he's a prophet. You see, Simon don't even know who's in his house. 
He don't even know who this woman is, nor does he know who the man is that she is affectionately honoring and worshiping at his feet. But yet none of the criticism that was going on deterred her from doing this. Now, how many of you know that it's always when your biggest critics show up is when you start doing something for Jesus? How many of you know when you're really going to give your life and dedicate yourself to the glory of God and to his purpose, it's when you focus on that and when you determine to do that, it's when then that you're going to get the greatest criticism that you could get. How many of you know when you compromise and do what the world does, you will not be criticized? Hello? How many of you know when you do what the world does every day, lie, cheat, spit, you know, in between? How many of you know when you do what they do, you're not going to get any criticism, but you let that thing change and you start to do something to the glory of God, you will become the butt of everybody's criticism. How many of you hear that? And people will criticize you because of your posture in him. You see, they criticized her because they didn't even know who he was, but they saw her doing something that was such adoration that they didn't know how to handle it. How many Christians, how many people have read the Bible, the number one most selling book in the world? Can you imagine her story has been repeated by the pulpiteers of millions of Christians? Come on. How many of you know you have an assignment? Are you there today? You have an assignment. Let's look at this Judges chapter 13. And, and this is a story about a woman, another woman. And I chose her for a reason. Now this woman, her name is not mentioned. And now she's a nameless woman, but watch this. Manoah is her husband. Let me hear this. Now I'm gonna add a little piece here because it helps the story. Now Manoah, it's kind of funny. He is one of these men that likes to see his wife go to church, but he don't go to church very much. He's watching the, the Israelites against the Syrians, you know, NBA. And so he's on the couch. And he's, when she comes home from church all lit up, he's there snoring. Chips are everywhere. Dips half eaten. And his belly's full and he's nice and cozy. And she comes home lit up for God. And Manoah gets this deal going on where all of a sudden she comes home one day and she says, Manoah, sit up. And he kind of, you know, rustles himself up a little bit, you know. He's a little depressed. His team, the Israelites are down. And uh, so he's a little bummed out. He was hoping that guy would have made that shot, but he couldn't slam dunk it because he was too short. Jewish team, you know, sure. Anyway, you know. So, so the process goes where all of a sudden Manoah is standing there and she says, a man of God came to me. And, it, and it was like a, he was like an angel. Well, Manoah ain't seen no angel. And Manoah hadn't heard God. How could it be? How could it be that God would speak to her and not him? I mean, he's the guy that his name's in the book. And she ain't even got her name in the book and the angel comes to her. He's ticked off. How many of you hear this? I mean, he's bothered. By the way, M Manoah's name means... <laughs> Uh, passive means laid back it means uh, resting how many of you hear that how many of you know there's a lot of women in church these days more women than there are men hello and, and, and so Manoah 
is like these men that, that uh, have checked out of spirituality. Now, look at this. She not only says an angel, a man of God comes to her, but the man of God told her what she's going to do. She's going to get pregnant. Now, how many of you know man and his ego? I mean, he walks around and he's saying, yeah, well, <laughs> I got something to say about this. And God already tells her what this kid's purpose is. It says, and then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said, oh my Lord. Now he's made it personal. Please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we shall do for the child who will be born. Now teach us. He's gotten in on her prayer. Verse nine, and God listened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field. But Manoah, look what it says. Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Don't you know God has just got a sense of humor? Manoah prays for the first time. He says, okay, God, What's all this about? Talk to me. I'm, a, I'm send a man of God again. I'm, I'm up for it now. And the Lord sends the angel again to the woman in the field. And she got to go back and tell Manoah, he showed up again. Now, how many of you know that God knows he's making, he's making this guy, I mean, he's working on this guy. How many of you know God will work on some men? Ladies, listen to me today. I'm taking this somewhere. If you dare listen, God's going to work on some men in this house. He's going to work on some of you women that come to this church and your men aren't saved and they're not walking with God. God's going to do some kind of powerful miracle for them. How many of you believe with me today that God wants to see some men come into the kingdom of God? And if you're one of those men that is in the kingdom, well, listen, this is good instruction manual how to stay in God's grace. Fellas, I'm ganging up on you today. Me, God, and the Holy Ghost is coming after you today. Are you listening now? What do you do when your husband is laid back, when he's Manoah, passive about spiritual things? What do you do when you are excited about Jesus, his word, his church, and your husband is not very excited about God? How many of you hear this? You see, we're going into 2012, and the 2012 is a year of government. Come with me, come with me. There's a shift going on, saints. There's a shift going on. There's a shift in the heavenlies going on. And so because we're going into the government, how many of you know the government of our houses are going to have to get in order? Are you listening to me? We're going to have to get our home in order so that we can try to get our nation in order. Put your hands up into heaven for a second. Put your hands up into glory for a minute. Just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Can the angel of the Lord come and visit your home? Can the angel of the Lord come and visit your home? Is your home clean where the Holy Spirit can come? Can your home be a place uh, where it's not full of strife uh, and arguments uh, and, and, and all that and drinking and mess going on? Can your home be filled with the glory? Can your home be filled uh, with the righteousness of God? Oh, this is about restoration today, saints. Uh, this is about uh, coming in uh, and realizing that we're in the time where families are touched. Uh, we're in the time of holiday season uh, where families are going to get touched. Uh, 